Hello and welcome back to another video in the world of Monster Hunter. Today is more on Iceborne. Now I'm doing this for two reasons. First one is I got criticised on my longsword play, so you're getting heavy bowgun this time. Haha. <laughs> Secondly, it's just to confirm or alleviate the hearth truths that were in the previous video. Some of what I said, although it does still hold, it might not be as of the gravity that I previously stated while well, the main one of this is maximum might that is going to be a perfect example in the previous video, video I basically stated that unless you are at maximum stamina for more than seven seconds which is why I'd previously heard maximum might simply doesn't does not come under an effect at all so there is some alterations to that now this does actually come with pictures and these seem to be quite official However, as to the actual source, I found about 10 different sources all with these, but they don't actually seem to be from Capcom or the Monster Hunter team themselves. So again, take what you will from this. Now this first one depicts some elemental and elementless changes. So the maximum attack power boost from elemental attacks has been increased. Non-elemental boost skill effect slightly decreased from 10 to 5. I won't say that slightly, that's a 50% cut. And elemental attack skills go to level 6 with a new skill added that grants the free element status and increased elemental attack damage when continually attacking. Now that last one sounds very interesting. I'm kind of intrigued to see how that would work. Could you potentially then have something like, with an ignition, have an elementless on it? Your first three attacks will be elementless, and then your next three, for example, we're not going to count this as true charge, I probably picked a bad one here, but would your next ones then start adding in an elemental effect? That does seem quite intriguing, and as for the elemental attack up, this next picture shows it quite well. As you can see here, here we have three different sword and shields for fire, ice and water and it does also show the difference in their respective elemental damage levels, levels 1 to 5 for world and also levels 1 to 6 for iceborne comparing the two. So you can see that the elemental cap up has definitely been increased as well as the overall level itself which is quite nice. There have also been a few gun lance additions where worms stake blast detonation damage is slightly increased as well as reloads faster. A guard point is added to the loading animation and if you have the guard skill you can use worm stake blast after a guard. If worm stake blast does not hit the mark the equipped slinger ammo will drop to the ground and the wide sweep no longer knocks down other players. This is quite nice I must admit. And for your PS4 players these are some of the combo changes potentially. I play on keyboard and mouse, so this is completely irrelevant to me, so I'm going to move on now. Thank you very much. Now the next one is something I'm still a little bit salty over, and that is the weakness exploit changes. I don't completely agree with them, but it is what it is. So, as you can see, attacks that hit weak points have a 10% increased affinity with an extra 5% on wounded parts. That's from your clutch claw. Level 2 is attacks that hit weak points have a 15% increased affinity with an extra 15 on wounded parts. And then level 3 attacks that hit a weak point have 30% and then another 20% on wounded parts. Now I honestly do feel that weakness exploit should have just been left alone and there should have been a separate skill for essentially weakness exploit. But adding in the clutch claw and it could offer 70% affinity and maybe another damage multiplier, heavily suggesting the use of Clutch Claw but not making it near enough mandatory. That's just my opinion though. And what I gather from this image here is there's going to be some form of threshold meter that shows how tough a monster's hide is and when you're able to get your weakened weakness exploit buff of up to 50% usage. So you're going to, I'm assuming this is what this shows, you can have a red to blue and when it's at that transition point, that is when you're going to start to get your wounded buff multiplier on top of your affinity, which could be nice, at least that way you're able to monitor the effects of weakness exploit and you're not just guessing all the damn time. And finally, 
we have a little bit of an update on the maximum might skill which is the one I'm very most interested in now this isn't actually ended up being too bad it's actually potentially a slight buff but the more I read it and look at it the more I realize they've just made it purposefully obnoxious and obtuse for the purpose of being obnoxious and obtuse level one keep stamina full for five seconds and increase the affinity by 10% last for two seconds this basically falls throughout level two is 20% for three seconds 30% for three seconds 40% for four seconds and finally level five activates and increases affinity by 40% as soon as stamina is full and deactivates when stamina is used that is the maximum might we are used to it's just added on another 10% so basically build for maximum might level 5 or don't use maximum might that's what I'm reading from that and the rest of it is just fluff for the sake of being fluff and annoying anyway thank you very much for watching if you like what you see and hear maybe click the subscribe button it's free helps me out a lot in the meantime good luck have fun and don't die it's bad for the health